The big cars were fast, they were dangerous, they were heavy, but they were totally outdated by 1912, 13, when the little high revving cars showed the way. I think the men who raced them in period must have been supermen, quite honestly, because no power steering, minimal braking, so you're, you're heaving on the handbrake as well as pressing on the foot brake. But what amazes me is they, they would race for six, seven, eight hours without stopping on these atrocious roads, and it kicks up a hell of a lot of dust. So in a race, you want to be up front. After that, just forget it, because the dust is unbelievable. Quite frequently, goggles were broken, and there's no safety glass in those days, so people lost their sight with the goggles being shattered and glass going into their eyes. All part of the fun, of course. Your significance really is it's the last of the monster cars, and it's the only big moors left. They're, they're, they're all gone, so it's an important car in that respect, also. This particular car here at the museum, I rebuilt it some years ago actually, so it's my baby. I like to see it and visit it. It was built in 1908, it found its way to Argentina where it was raced, and eventually it broke. It was just an old race car, but luckily it wasn't scrapped. It was pushed into a tumble-down building beside a panard of all things. So these two great marks, a moors and a racing panard, stood together for many decades. The car was restored, there was a lot of detail which was wrong, and that's why the car eventually came to me to get the detail right, get the engine running, and sort out its weird ignition, which is called low tension ignition. It's a low voltage make and break system where the contact breakers are actually inside the cylinder, and by 1908 that technology was from 10 years previously. So the car's here, it's, you know, exercised gently. The start-up procedure is somewhat lengthy, but once you've got it oiled and watered and fueled, there's a little device on the side of the car which puts it onto half compression. Prime the engine with little pet cocks on top of the cylinders. You give an almighty heave on the handle and if you're lucky, she'll burst into life. Jump into the driving seat and away you go and it's the biggest thrill ever to drive that car. The torque is just unbelievable. Conventional four-stroke engine, 750 cubic inch on four cylinders. It's like a modern motor in each cylinder, so huge pistons, huge stroke. Individual cylinders which are copper jacketed, so they'd start with the cast cylinder and the water jacket that would then be fabricated from copper sheet and screwed into place. You know, there's such torque reaction, blip the throttle and the whole car just tries to throw itself over. And the oiling system is called a total loss. So oil is drawn from this tank, flows through sight glasses, so you know that the engine's getting oil. It goes into the engine and out onto the driver and the road. So it's a messy car, and the neighbors don't like it. <laughs> That's for sure. And of course, it's exposed valves as well. So you see everything happening. It's all there before you. All these little parts dancing up and down as the engine runs. Very hypnotizing to watch. All these early cars had a riding mechanic and he was there for a reason, he wasn't just ballast. His duties were initially to start the car, because really to start this car you need two men, one to work the controls, the other to actually heave on the handle. The second thing he had to do is to keep the fuel pressure up, so that it has a hand pump to do that. His third big duty is to check the oil is flowing to the engine correctly, so he has to keep an eye on the sight glasses. All the time, we're bounding along at 60, 70 miles an hour. So, you know, he's a brave chap in this open cockpit. Institute, it is in the right place. Revs are just so 
passionate about caring for their cars correctly, not just letting them be static exhibit, but to use them to keep them alive. If they're not used, they just fester and die, and especially true of these old cars. They do need exercise. That's good for the people driving too. It gives them a, a little kick, a little boost. You know, I'm trying to pass on my knowledge of how to drive it. It isn't difficult, but you just have to be aware of what you're driving. It is tremendously powerful. It doesn't have any brakes. The clutch is called a cone clutch. Not heavy, but you, know, you have to treat it with respect. Three-speed gearbox, so one, two, three, and a huge gap between first and second, so a nice, clean, silent gear change is impossible. You know, you first, then you wait for probably five or six seconds, then you go into second gear, by which time you've lost your momentum. But in second gear, you know, it picks up and it just accelerates away again. I don't use all the power today, you know. It's at over 110 years old, you respect its fragility. But even so, you can still really enjoy the power from this car. I'm very lucky to have been able to drive this car, even luckier working on it, and I can sit in the very seat that Yenity sat in. It's just a great feeling to put yourself back in the, the skin of those early drivers and just get the sensation that they had and just feel how tough it was to go out there and win a race. Do you know, I wish I could sit everybody in the seat of that car and say, God, just have a blast in it. And I can guarantee they'll be smiling from ear to ear. Uh, it, it's such a, an education to go back in time and just see what, how it was at the beginning of motoring. Today's motors are so wonderful and so easy to drive. They drive themselves, let's face it. But, you know, the sensation of driving that old car, the seat of the pants sensation is, I think, great. And I'd love, not just children, middle-aged grown-ups, even old men like myself, to just experience it. My name is Eddie Beresford. I specialise in restoration of vehicles. I am over here visiting the Revs Institute in Naples on a short holiday. It's just great to see all these wonderful cars here, especially the 1908 Moors.